And now we're here to talk NBA because that's what we do here on h and Media and on Barber's Chat Network. So we're going to bring in uh, my brother. Uh, he is uh, – one of the founders of this great uh, basketball network you watch, Agent B Media. He is also a rapper extraordinaire. He is also, uh, you know, a ho- co-host of uh, Summer Sessions, which you can find on the Barber's Chat Net Patreon. And he is the president of West Hollywood. Pat Vito, what is going on, my, my guy? How you feeling, man? I love the, uh, I love the uh, intro. That was dope. The intro, I, I, I bid you up. I, I, I bid you up. I bid you up. <laughs> Uh, so we are about 24 hours away from the start of the NBA season. Uh, it was it was it was a decent off season. Probably not as as you know as much stuff happening as years past. But of course, you had the big um, Dame Lillard to Milwaukee Bucks thing. We'll get into a minute before we start that conversation. What what's some things you actually felt about like as far as player movement this this off season? It was kind of like slower than usual. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the new uh, – well, not the new salary cap, but the new CBA. And um, teams probably not wanting to go over the second handle, especially if – well, the um, I think the second – whatever it's called, especially if you don't have a chance to win right now. So I think the teams that um, are going for it are literally going for it, like the Bucks going for it, the uh, Celtics clearly going for it. Um, even a team like the Timberwolves with the moves that with, with, with the contracts that they've given out seem to be a team that like they think that they can go for it. So um, I think a lot of that was just a reaction to, like I said, the new um, CBA agreement and the, and the um, stiff penalties you have, um, you know, if you go over the um, second line. Yeah, I feel like Adam Silver kind of like, you know, laid the law down a little bit this offseason, like also with the the low management rules, which I am a big fan of because I hate low management. Y'all call me old school. Y'all come with the fuck out what you want. I, as I, I feel like just from when I, I'm I'm blessed, really all four of us are blessed to go to a lot of games. Um you know, and so for me, it's not a problem to be able to go to sporting events. But for the average fan, they might only be able to afford, you know, one or two games a year. And you want to see your stars. Now, in some situations, I get it. You know, they if they're, if they're hurt, they're hurt. You can't do nothing about that. But I'm glad they implemented rules a little bit to change that. Um, we're going to start. I have a couple topics we want to go uh, go with. You know, I have a rebuttal to that, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My only thing is, like, how do you tell people that they aren't hurt? Because even if you, for instance, right, we all cover the clip. Well, with me and you, we we both cover the Clippers. Yeah. When you look at the injury report, they have injury issues on there. Like, like yeah. they'll have, like, knee management. They'll have shoulder management, whatever. So it's like my thing is, like, I think you get to a slippery slope. It's like how do you actually curve that by telling people that they aren't hurt? Like, right. how, I believe my knee is not hurting right now. But you, right, right. But you walk in that, like, they're walking that thin fine line of, you know, playing hurt and injured. You know, are, are, you, are you injured? Can you not? Lace them up, or are you, you know, is your is your knee kind of barking, or is your thigh a little bit bruised from playing, you know, four games in seven days? So it's definitely you're definitely walking a fine line there. Um, and I we definitely got some breaking news. Giannis yeah. out to Tacumpo, yeah. three year extension, one hundred and eighty six million dollars. Oh wow! Okay, okay. Look, look, so, look, look, look at Mikey with the scoop. All right. <laughs> so Giannis will be staying, and he has a player Giannis option. He okay. has a player option for 20, the 27, 28 season. So Giannis shout is there. Out, shout out to the Bucks for moving like an actual NBA team and not their fellow Midwest brothers from Bulls, who I'll get into later in the show. I don't feel like random about right now, but we've got a couple topics. You know what's funny? Whenever we talk Chicago sports, Dante has his look of disgust. Like he's because <laughs> I, I mean, at what point is enough enough? Like we, we know what's gonna happen. Like nothing, nothing. I'm not, I'm not expecting these niggas to. I, the expectation went away a long time ago. I just still. I'm like, huh, okay, you know. Yeah. But uh, so I got a gang of topics we're gonna get into, and we, we know we'll go around the room with this man. Let's talk about Victor Wibbenyama. And for all you media outlets, we're gonna act like you don't know how to pronounce the nigga name. It's Wibbenyama. If my ass can pronounce his name, and I fuck everybody's name up. Y'all should be able to pronounce this. Victor Wibbenyama, uh, he has looked like a fucking alien in, in the preseason. There's just no way around it. I try not to overreact too much around preseason, uh, but he looks fucking crazy. Uh, he looks like everything that he's been hyped up to be. The only question I have, especially about super lanky mugs like him, is can he stay healthy? Um, Pavy, what do you think about what you saw from uh, Wimby during the preseason, what his season outlook looks like uh, with him and the Spurs? Okay, now here's the thing about preseason. I try not to overreact too much to preseason. And I will tell you the one moment when I was actually done with preseason. I already know what you're going to say. Scott, 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 <laughs> you remember that conversation. 
The year D Rose came back, <laughs> insane in preseason. <laughs> Very yeah. first game against Philadelphia, nigga had ten turnovers. So yeah. I like, that was what I was in preseason. Having said all of that, he looks insane. <laughs> he looks insane. Um, um, my my thing with him is honestly, I mean, I'm a honestly, I'm a like go there. I think he can win defensive player of the year first season. Okay. I think it's an actual thing that he could actually do. I mean, like if Jer- if Jaron Jackson can get three blocks, you trying to tell me he can't get three blocks? I think anything, I think anything less than him getting three blocks is actually a failure. I actually think forget his offense. Um, you know, like, like I think I think even like the shooting, I think we're like kind of enamored by it. But I don't think it's just gonna be that easy for him every single night. Like even when he, when, he, when he played against the um Heat and he did that thing that whatever everyone's going crazy. That was Thomas Bryant in the regular season. That'll be Bam out of bio. You know, you'll have people who will offer a little bit more resistance to him. Um, right away. Now, again, I think he'll get bigger. I think he'll, you know, um, grow um, into it. But I don't think it'll be as easy as it looked for him in preseason. But defensively, I think from day one, he should be a top 10 defender in the um, league, like with that length. And it's even, even like small deal. Even if he isn't blocking shots, you can see people get the ball and then he gets there and it's like, well, I'm not going to shoot this because I can't even see the rim right now. Or he'll just like close out and people are air ball. I forgot I was watching the game. Um, they playing somebody and he closed out on somebody. They sh- it's Dario Saric. He closed out on Saric, and Saric shot over him, but he airballed. It was probably because he couldn't even see the rim. So I think from day one, my man, but I even said this even like when he got drafted. I think from day one, he should be one of the best defenders in the um league. And when I look at his career outlook, I think he should be, I think, honestly, damn near Bill Russell when it comes to that. I think defensively, he should be one of the greatest players that we've ever seen as long as he can at least stay on the court. I I, I agree with that. I think, you know, when you see – the videos of Sham God down in Dallas wearing the arm extenders and they're, they're getting prepared for women. Like niggas his, is prepping for war. Yeah, <laughs> niggas, niggas are shook. Like, he, he has the ability to change the game on both sides of the ball. And, like, one of the things that I saw that was crazy was here he is. He defended a wing in Andrew Wiggins from the, from the, uh, from the corner. Came, Andrew drove. He blocked the shot, came down on the break, pulled up, hit the three. So I think, you know, I agree, you know, it is preseason. So, we you know, in the, reg- in the regular season, a lot of these shots won't come as easy. So with Wembley, I think my Wembley, my only concern is, you know, how he handles the physicality. We know we saw Luca adapt to it. Luca said it was still, he said it was easy. You know, it was easy money. So seeing these these great uh, players from overseas as they come over, how they adjust to the modern game, which, you know, as Pavi has said for years, the game ain't really physical no more. It's not, it's not that old bang them, bruise them up type of game. So I think as long as he can withstand that, and like we said, he's still young, he'll continue to get bigger and stronger. It's gonna be insane. And like one thing I saw, where well, they were because we know everybody's concerned, obviously, with his length, is the injuries. They were saying how like he's done scientifically everything he can to make his feet as strong as possible, and they show some of the nut ass exercises he does. And it's <laughs> like so he's put the prep work in. So as long as he can stay healthy, like we say with a lot of guys. I think it's truly like the sky's the limit, bro. We might we're gonna see some things that we that gonna make you say like, oh shit, like nah, he's he's really nice. Nah, when when I saw that highlight of him when w- Wiggins was trying to break him down and he didn't even fucking move, like he's just right there, like you're not going nowhere. And Andrew Wiggins isn't a small motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? He made Wiggins look this big. I was like, oh okay, now I see what Pavy's talking about, like defensively, because I didn't. Obviously, we see with the length, we see you know he can alter shots at the rim, obviously make it tough on the jump shooters. But when he his lateral movement, I was like, oh no, nah, buddy is different. So. How, how everybody, you know, I'm just going to piggyback off y'all. As long as he can stay healthy, then Wemben Yama has a very bright future in this league. And it's coming down to that point now where we have kind of like a changing of the guard where, you know, LeBron is kind of leaving. KD is getting older. Giannis will probably still take in now as that number one player. But who's next up? And it's, it's, it's Wemben Yama's for the taking. Yeah, I think even like from from both perspectives, you look from like a superstar perspective. He already had a run in with Britney Spears doing this this, this offseason. I mean, so as far as superstar, <laughs> TMZ niggas already know who he is. So it's really all about playing. Um, uh, so I, I definitely um agree with that. It's just really about the kid just you know staying healthy, man. Um, one uh, I got a little bit more. Not really breaking news, but we'll talk about this more in the local hour. Seems like Jalen Johnson's two interception game. Uh got Ryan Poles to wake up as, as he says on a uh, park in Spiegel on 670 to score that his representatives are now talking to the bears about a contract extension. So 
that's something we'll discuss later on in the uh, local hour. But uh, let's move on to our next point here in our season preview, man. I want to talk about something I'm not really a fan of, which is the in-season tournament. I, I don't get it whatsoever. I've had it broken down to me many times. It still sounds stupid to me, but it's starting right away. It's going to start next Friday, November 3rd, and we'll be going on until Saturday, December 9th, with the championship game will be in Las Vegas. Anything NBA championship in Las Vegas doesn't sound like a good mix to me, but what the hell do I know? Uh, Pappy, what's your opinion on the end season tournament? I know they're trying to draw up interest, especially with you know a lot of eyes still in the NFL at the beginning of the year. Do you think it's a smart move? Do you think it'll, it'll pan out? What's your whole opinion on the end season tournament? Um, in theory, I hate it, but I'm gonna give it a chance. Like, even I think when they even like announced the play in, like before I actually saw it work in the bubble, I was like, this is stupid, but then once I actually saw it work. It was something I loved. So I'm going to give it a chance. Um, I think that – I think the one cool thing about it is maybe you will see a team – for instance, right, I, like in the playoffs last year, how Sacramento was a team that was kind of good all year, but they didn't really get that, like, big stage until the playoffs. I think it's a way that maybe, you know, you may have, like, a surprise team that may go on a run. Like, you may have, like, an Orlando, a team that doesn't usually get, you know, um, on that stage, especially – in the early part of the um, season that, you know, can maybe get on a run and maybe, you know, some guys put their names on the map that usually wouldn't be on the map. Uh, so I think, you know, maybe you could see that happen. And if that's something that happens, and I think that that's something that's dope for the league, for the players. And again, guys also are getting paid too. I think you get a, like a bonus for winning. And yeah, it's like 500 K it's like 500 K a player. Yeah. Like everybody ain't making 20 million a year. You got yeah. some other guys down there at the end of that bench, that $500,000 can do some good for them. So, you know, I'm going to give it a chance. In theory, I don't like it, but, you know, I at least want to give it a chance. For the most part, I like most of the, the rules and the um, changes that Adam Silver has made. Even if I don't like it at first, it becomes something I like. So I at least want to see it before I speak on it. And I'm never against going to Vegas. Throwing that out there. I'm never against <laughs> going to Vegas. Hey, hey, you and me both. Bro. I'm about to say I go to Vegas three, four times a year. So <laughs> like, it, it, it's perfect. But um, I agree. And I think um, also – like we always talk about, you know, what drives the revenue and a lot of it is these TV contracts. So you need to create these events and different things that you can pitch and sell to them. So, you know, the contracts continue to grow. And that's one of the reasons that revenue around the league has continued to get higher and higher. So I agree uh, in similar fashion to the uh, play in. We need to see it in action first before we say we hate it. Like a lot of shit, uh, people in our generation, we starting to sound like those, you know, stay off my lawn ass. My we definitely some old niggas now. That we, that we used to hate. And so a lot of times when I get ready to hate on some shit, I have to take a step back and say, is this just me, you know, being stuck in my ways and used to the traditions I like and shit like that? Or is this something that's really trash? So I think we got to at least give it a shot. And I think, you know, overall, it's, it's just a lot of it is just a frame and it's still the same amount of games. This ain't. It's not nothing major. You feel me? Facts. Yeah, I, f I feel you on that. I was the same conversation last week with my guy. And he was like, what do you think of, of this tournament? And I'm the same way. I don't I don't, I don't know how to, how to think about it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Everything that Adam Silver has done, for the most part, I've agreed with. The only shit that I don't agree with that the league is doing is these fucking city connect jerseys every oh, year and they're fucking, oh they're so fucking bad they're fucking they're, they're terrible they're, they're terrible mind you views on my own i do work for the swoosh but them shit's <laughs> ass um but uh he said the views and thoughts do not represent uh mikey my employer right yeah my employer um, right. but for example like the all-star game when they switch that format to x amount of points win the quarter but for X amount of points, you totaled it up, totaled it up. We donated to charity, but the fourth quarter actually meant something. I thought that shit was so stupid until you actually watch it. And I'm like, oh, no, this shit is fire because they're actually getting after it. And you're seeing guys are playing. So you got guys are playing all out. So that's the number one thing for me is I want to see the veteran teams, the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heat. I want to see how the Lakers approach this. I want to see how the Nuggets approach this. Are they just going to treat this like a tune-up because they're still worried about you know, April, May, and June. On the flip side, I want to see the OKCs. I want to see the Sacramento Kings again. I want to see a team like the Orlando Magic and the Detroit Pistons really try to give some guys go. So it's going to be interesting to see, and I won't knock it until we actually see the product on the court. I mean, uh, Mikey, you kind of hit like the nail on the head. It's really about effort for me, and that's with anything with the NBA in general. And I think my number one issue with the NBA today is I don't feel, and I don't want to say like they're not going to try hard. Who am I to say a, a professional athlete isn't trying hard? But 
sometimes some of these niggas don't be trying. Like even you name with with the, when they changed the the All Star format. I think the first year was it was the All Star game right after Kobe died, and it was in Chicago. That fourth quarter was amazing, and I feel like it was like that for a couple of years after that too. Now last year them niggas just did not give a fuck. That was one of the worst. All star, not only all star games, one of the worst all star weekends I've ever seen in my life. So, if they go out there and they're actually competing, if there's something they're actually caring about, and you bring up the money, if that's a big enough incentive for them to get going, I'll give it a shot. I'm, I, I'll try most things, you know, uh, first and see how I like it, see how, how, how it does. Like with the, with the play in, I thought it was a genius idea from the jump. And uh, it's actually played out better than I thought it would. I feel like for the most part, it's been entertaining every year of its inception. So maybe this would be the same thing. If they could try hard and if we have some of these more exciting young teams who are probably not going to be around come playoff time. I think there's a lot of uh, hype around the Oklahoma City Thunder. They got a pretty cool slam cover that I saw today, We, which I'm sorry. I like the old school slam covers as, a, as an OG subscriber of slam. I even subscribe to Slam Magazine. I'm showing my age right now. Slam Magazine, Double XL, and The Source. I used to bring them shit in, in class in high school all the damn time for the cold-ass covers. So the Oklahoma City Thunder co- cover they did was pretty dope. If you have young teams like them, teams like the Kings, teams like the Pistons, uh, like that, the Magic, who are competing, and maybe they even knock some of these older teams out, then, yeah, I think it can be more exciting. But it's really just all about effort to me. And we even had uh, – that State Farm agent, Clifford Paul, said he told uh, Joe Lakeup and the Warriors, oh, we're going to win that cup. And maybe that's just because that nigga ain't won nothing. He just wants something <laughs> in, his, in, in his fucking uh, lo- uh, you know, trophy room or whatever. But if the effort is there, I'll give it a shot, man. So uh, I'm just Why you ain't tell him why, why you leave out the King Magazine subscription? Why you leave that one out? I was just about to say. Why you leave out the King Magazine subscription? My mother got the, in the mail. There's no way I was getting the King subscription. <laughs> it, just, it just was not going to happen. It just was not going to happen. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, nigga, nigga had to, like, go through the Jet Magazine. It was the Ebony Beauty of the Week real quick. Like, we got up in here. Like, look my mama come around. So I definitely didn't have that. I definitely would be, like, you remember how you go to, like, the FYU or some shit, co- coconuts, nigga, just be looking through, you know, in the aisle. Like, oh, okay, buy me the body. You know what I'm saying? Which, right. The one thing I want to see, though, from the from this tournament, I want to see if how we were talking about, the like, the competitive juices and the competitive nature. I want to see if we can develop some storylines for the for the yeah, rest of the robberies. season or this, yeah. like some rivalry, some new some new blood. So that, that that's going to be dope. Uh, let's move on to uh, a guy who we just talked about a couple seconds ago, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, Damian Lillard got traded to the Bucks a couple weeks ago, man. Uh, they have been even in the preseason. I'm like how they how they how they've seen defensively. I got some questions about them, but uh, my question to you, Pat, because I haven't really heard your opinion on this outside of you know what we talked about in the group chat. What do you think about the trade? Uh, of course, like everything that went on, and do you think they should be uh, only Eastern favorites, or should they just be title favorites in general? Yes, but no, but no, but yes. Um, I actually think the trade is a. Okay, I'm gonna preface this by saying if you have a chance to go get Damian Lillard, you go get Damian Lillard. For one, he's what one of the 75 best players ever played a game of basketball. All I, I love Dame. He should not be on that list. He should. He should. Not over like, no, 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 not over Dwight. That was bogus. But Dame being on that list will look better in 20 years than it than it looks to you right now. I think. Man, 100. But as in the year that was made, hell no. No, no, like like Dame. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> but he's one of 75 best players. Also, Giannis doesn't sign that extension. I'm sure if you don't go out and get Dane. Also, it's a great business move. You playing fucking Milwaukee, you gotta keep people interested, you gotta keep making money. But all that being said, I think the trade was a slight overreaction. Slight overreaction. Um, and I wonder if you solved you quote unquote solved one issue because I didn't necessarily think that the offense was that bad in the first place. And also the last time they were healthy, they won a championship which was 2021. Now, granted, you could say Chris Wilson has taken a step back since then. That's fair. He had his um, knee issue that I don't necessarily think he's actually recovered from. But for some reason, they had a working formula. Like, I remember that year, you would see Giannis off ball a lot. They would get a ball to Middleton. They would get a ball to Drew and let Giannis roll to the rim. For some fucking reason, last year, they just went back to letting Giannis try to drive through 16 people and do four back dives. I have no idea why they did that. And also, I wonder if you just – if you quote unquote solved one issue offensively and created a whole nother issue defensively. Um, if you look at even last year, right? The Jimmy Butler thing, they don't really have anybody who can guard wings mm-hmm. on the team. Now, granted, maybe you say, okay, you get you get um Dame. Now 
if Jimmy is going crazy, you throw um, Dame out there and you think, all right, if Jimmy going to score 50, Dame, you go score 50, and Giannis, you try to guard Jimmy. But even still, that's a lot off matchup because Giannis is the power forward center and Jimmy is a wing. You still have nobody out there who can guard wings. And when I look at a team like the uh, Celtics, I remember that playoff series, uh, Pelicans Blazers, a couple years back. Oh, yes. Dame was arrested. Dame was in jail. Dame, Dame went Carr is still in Drew Holiday's name. Dane went up there post game and said, I have never been defended this way. And I didn't even want to argue with him because he probably hadn't. The man who did that is playing for the other team in the East now. So yeah. granted, so granted, yes, again, I love the move. Um, and I mean, obviously, like, you know, even the fast breaks, Giannis going down, fast break, you gotta collapse. You kick it out to Dane. At first, you was kicking it out to Grayson Allen and Drew Holiday. Dame shooting that ball is a lot better than Grayson Allen, Drew Holiday, Pat Connaughton. Whoever the Jay Crowder, whoever the hell else. But like I said, last time this team was healthy, they won a championship. And I wonder if you quote unquote again solved one issue, but created but created a whole nother one. Also, we gotta see about the coach. Like, I want to give him a chance, but I don't know what he does. And I think a lot of the things actually at some points in times in the past were like Bud's fault. I thought Bud was a great defensive man, but offensively, again, sometimes it's like, bro, brother, what are you doing? You just letting Giannis dribble into 16 people, bro. We looking at you and you know, this doesn't work. So again, like I said, I like it, but I, I do have my questions. And to answer the favorites conversation, no, I actually think Boston should be the favorites in the East, in my personal opinion. So this is this is what I'm gonna say about it. One, I got a rebuttal to the it was too much. There's never too much when you're trading for a superstar. Yes, you're not gonna 100 percent uh fix all the uh, problems. I'm also gonna use this in what we used a couple weeks ago. I think we'll bangers on here and we were talking about uh sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to keep your person you know what I'm saying the bucks ain't well you know the uh, uh Giannis was doing the liking niggas pictures on instagram shit he's liking liking bitches pictures on instagram that's what the nigga was doing so yeah maybe maybe they overpaid you know you know uh what, what kobe had to pay four million dollars for that ring 10 years ago to make sure vanessa ain't leave like sometimes you gotta overpay sometimes you gotta pay the five to make sure she don't leave so i'm not mad at the, what the bucks did with that I, I don't think they should be title favorites because I still feel like it's the Denver Nuggets. And when we'll get into them, we talk about the game. Like, they niggas lost nobody but Bruce Brown. Uh, so I still think the Nuggets should be the favorite. But in the East, they should 100% be the title favorites. I don't want to hear shit about the goddamn Boston Celtics until Jason Tatum realizes that maybe I stop playing like an asshole when the fucking the, all the marbles online. There's no damn way that series should have went to seven last year. They shouldn't have been down 3 0. I love Jimmy Butler. I love what the Heat do. But there's a lot of shit that the Heat shouldn't have been there because the, the Bucks shouldn't have lost to them niggas and the Celtics shouldn't have lost to them niggas. So and still him and Mr. I Can't Dribble, uh, Daniel from Insecure himself, Jalen Brown, can actually play together as one. And Joe Mazzula actually used his timeouts. I got questions about the, about the Celtics. They were lying a lot on Al Horford and, you know, the, 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 his old age and, and, I, and Porzingis is good. Can the niggas stay healthy? So they've got a lot of questions, too. So I do feel like the Milwaukee Bucks should be the Eastern Conference favorites just because as many questions I have about, about Milwaukee, I got way more questions about Boston. I got I'm, I'm riding with Boston as a favorite, too, just off the strength that you're adding a veteran NBA champion in Jeru Holiday to kind of be the voice of reason. You know, Marcus Smart, I when they traded Marcus Smart, I was really leery of that decision because they were that's taking away a big part. You're taking away your kind of your heart and soul, your defensive. He does a lot of the intangible stuff, but now you bring in a better version of Marcus Smart and Jeru Holiday. I think they won't have those lapses come April, May when they're facing a, you know, Miami down here. I don't think they'll allow it to get to to 3 0. So I really do like the Boston Celtics as a favorite. I think adding KP is huge. I don't think they really are missing anything in trading Robert Williams. I think they got to upgrade in KP. Jeru Holiday is that piece right there to tie it all together. I, you know, the Bucks, we've seen this time and time again. Every time a superstar gets traded to a new team and everybody hops on that, that team as the flavor of the month, that that team is going to win it all. It does not work like that. This is professional sports and they have to build chemistry. There's too many moving parts from the Milwaukee side that I agree with Pavi that with Pavi that has left that, you know, they're going to have to work through that and you're implementing a new coach. So it's going to take time for the Bucks. Ask me this question next year after a full year of them playing. Now that we know Giannis will be there, but I, I'm still riding with the Boston Celtics. 
Yeah, I agree. I think we go we go a little too hard on the Celtics because of their shortcomings without realizing they got two of the best wing players in the league and they both they both still under 25, right? Uh, yeah, I'm tired of hearing about the age. It's like hearing about no, but but you know, no, no, you, but like you, you, you gotta mention it though. Age. But not even that that's different. You gotta, yeah, before, you gotta before talk he about won, it. before he won, all you heard was he's 24, <laughs> he's a quarterback yeah. genius. But I mean that's real. That's but and like in hindsight, when you look back at anybody who's won anything before they win it, what do we always say? When they gonna do it? When is it gonna happen? Ooh, so with a right. team like with a team like Boston, when you have two of those two two of the top talent uh, wings in the league, and you add a Drew Holiday, I think you know the edge to adding KP. That team has already been so close, and it's been the Eastern Conference Finals and been to the finals that you just you they're one piece away. Essentially, they're taking that next step. And so I think as much as I like Milwaukee, and I think it really a lot of this conversation uh, depends on what we get from Chris Middleton. Uh, which version of Chris Middleton they get on a nightly basis that's going to determine the success of Milwaukee, obviously. Although, you know, Dame and Giannis will drive that that team. Um, but even still, I would have to go with Boston as the favorite. I think coming out the East, they should definitely be the title favorites uh, over anybody. If I could just add one more thing to the Boston thing. Um, also, I think sometimes in Milwaukee, when you talk about Drew's offense, I think sometimes Drew – and many times, damn near, especially down the stretch, because, I mean, Giannis can't shoot free throws, so you don't really want him getting fouled. He was the number one option sometimes, number one or number two option. I think that's a little bit too much to ask for Drew Holiday. I don't think he's that talented of an offensive player to be, um, you know, one of the main guys, especially down the stretch. He's in a situation in Boston. There will never be a point in time in which he's anything more, unless somebody is not playing, more, more than the fourth option on um, offense. Never. Mm -hmm. And with Chris has for his Ingus, I think because – you know, he was touted as being Dirk Nowinski and he, you know, didn't become Dirk. And then he went to Dallas and Luca just decided, I'm never going to pass you the basketball, even though he still averaged 20 points in Dallas. We act like K uh, KP just can't play basketball. I, I understand the man gets hurt sometimes, but last year he played 65 games. He had a great, he had probably the best season of his career last year in Washington. Now you can say that's because, you know, he got the ball a lot, Bradley Beal went there, whatever. But he had one of his best seasons last year in Washington. And, I don't think we're giving enough credence to his rim protection. That was a quote Anthony Edwards said where he even looks at KP as one of the best rim protectors in the league, and that's Anthony Edwards. The man is still 7'3". He's never played on a team with this many defenders. Like, brother, and your back, like you realistically on this team could have four all-defensive players. Like, you got Drew Holiday. You got um, Derek White. Um, you have Jalen Brown, you have, well, not Brown, but you have Tatum. I think, I think when Tatum locks in, he's a really good defender, um, as well. And then KP, KP on this team last year, he averaged 1.5, 1.5 blocks. He should average two. I mean, granted Horford is older, but now Horford just has to kind of shade him that way, shade him to him and KP can come in and um play cleanup. And also I actually, I like the Celtics bench. I know we're not talking about it, but I don't think it's that bad. Like, I, I'm not looking at the list of names that, that they have right now, but Peyton Pritchard is a guy that, granted, do I know if it'll happen? I don't know, but he just got paid, so he's he's um, there. I've seen some things that he's done um, in preseason. He might be a guy who might be in the six-man-of-the-year conversation, not saying he'll win it, conversation um, this season. So, again, I just like what ball – I think this is the most complete roster and the – Yes, they have quote unquote some weaknesses, but I think that this is the most complete roster. And also for Boston, I just think it's time. Bro, you've been doing this for seven years now, about seven, eight years now that they've been consistently good. I think it's time to actually get there. I mean, they've already been there. I think it's time to actually get there and you know try to actually for real for real win it. So that's why I'm picking Boston. I'm gonna say this one last thing and we'll go on to the next thing. Uh all y'all y'all bring good points. I'm not disagreeing with nothing y'all saying. It's just at the end of the game. When the fate of the world is on the line, I trust Damian Lillard more than I trust the nigga who's going to come in here with Kevin Garnett on his shirt and not play defense at the end of games. Say that Kobe talked to him in a dream, which would be which would be a lie. Kobe not talking to no Celtic in a dream. Let's just be 100% real about it. It's not going to happen. I, until that nigga actually shows up, and I do not hate Jason Tatum. I do. Until that nigga act, we know you do. I, I, I do not hate Jason Tatum. Until this nigga actually does it, I don't want to hear about it. I've seen Damian Lillard step up when the fate of the universe is on the line. Yes, so Drew, Holiday, get arrested by Drew Holiday too. Yeah, that's fine. But guess what? If that happens, you got Giannis. So that's why I feel like at the end of the game, they're going to have the edge. I think if we're just talking about who has a better roster, I think I think the Celtics has a better roster by far. But at the end of games, it, what did Drake say for the dogs? I'm going with the dogs. And the dogs in this situation, 
is Damian Lillard, man. Uh, let's go quickly into our sleepers before we actually talk about the games. Um, for, for tomorrow, uh, Eastern Conference, Western Conference sleepers. Let's just each name like maybe a team or two real quick. Um, I'll start with what who I think would be a sleeper in the not not really necessarily a sleeper in the East because I think the East is real top heavy. But a team that kind of you know eh, they might have a little thing. I'm I'm kind of looking at the Brooklyn Nets just a little bit. Like they've got things that I feel like. Not saying that they're gonna be a top five seed. They 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 could probably be you know a, a play in team. Maybe even less. You know the sixth seed or something like that. But the way that Ben Simmons has actually been playing, you know, it looks like you know yeah, I don't know eight turnovers, dog. He yeah, had eight, eight, turnovers? Assist, okay. eight turnovers, dog. That's, Nobody posted yeah, the rest of the stat line. <laughs> 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 it's all do that fucking behind the back pad. Oh, Ben Simmons is back. He had eight turnovers in that game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's this? You got Macau Bridges. You got Cam Johnson. I think this is a team that at least could be a team that I could see making the play in and actually have some sort of of an uh, identity. Um, with the West, there's a couple teams that I look at as as potential sleepers. My number one, obviously, is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, I love what they've got. I love Shea. I love the you know we finally gonna see Chet this year. Um, I, you know, so they they've actually got their their roster of teams that I feel like could be sneaky good a little bit. <laughs> Um, I'm still, I'm not saying this team is going to make the play in or do anything of substance, but when Biyama enough makes me enough to want to add the Spurs to one of my league pass teams, man. So everybody else in that conference, I'm, we, we kind of know a lot about. So that's where I'm going to go with, with, with my sleepers in the East and the West. Uh, as far as the East, bro, I don't know. They probably, they're not going to win a lot of games, but they're going to be fun to watch. I'll tell you that. So one team. I'm interested to see what they do is the Washington Wizards. They're not mm. going to be on shit, but the Jordan Rose Bar Wizards off the little shit, bro. They go dribbling, shooting all kinds. <laughs> they go, they, it's going to be all. It's, you know what it's going to be like? G low key. It's going to remind you a lot of them old Warriors with Monte Ellis, where they were just putting yeah. up everything. Right? They just putting up everything. That's going to be that type of vibe. So that's one team in the East and out West. Obviously, again, like you said, this is a team that's not really a sleeper. But honestly, if they stay healthy, I think the Lakers could do. Super damage this year. The Putting Rocks the Lakers in the sleeper is crazy. It, it is, but I mean, <laughs> based off everything that's happened the last three or four, based off everything that's happened the last few years, like we've like pretty much like my homies were talking like saying I was talking crazy, but bro, Braun has been hurt every year in LA. Yes, he like, really is every year. Hurt so I mean, too, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with the cane day come? That nigga foot start getting on fire. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, those are those are my two teams. Um, Scott, I fuck with the Nets pick. I fuck with the Nets pick because if, granted, if I, this is the, the biggest if of all time, but if Ben Simmons can return to form, we have to remember like Ben Simmons before he had his, I don't know what went on with him. He was probably one of the best defenders. My, my jammer left him, nigga. I wouldn't play no games either. She left me, nigga. I'll be out for the year. He was, he was one of the best defenders in the um, NBA and a um, all NBA person. But my sleeper team in the East. I might sound the same for saying this. Dante, you're going to laugh. The Atlanta Hawks. I don't think that they can actually win anything, but I do think this is a team that can win 45 games. Like, I mean, Trey Young, like, we get on Trey Young, but Trey Young has done a lot more than a lot of other people who we He's just not Luka. That's, way that's more. Issue, Trey yeah. Young has been to the same place as Luka. Let's yeah, not but you, okay, okay, look. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Do, do the wide screen. Do the wide no, screen real quick. Hold on. Time no, out, time out. No, Scott. What, what, what no, no, Scott, no, don't hold up. Everybody the fuck, no, the no, is the fan. No, 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 real no, 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 no. The same questions we got about Luka, I didn't make the fucking playoffs, Dodgers, with Kyrie Irving. <laughs> We should Trey Young have been to the same place. He went to the college finals. Same time. He made the playoffs last year and won a game against Boston. It did happen. I hear you. And he done been I working with and he done been working with about the same sometimes less than Did what Luca been working the team, with. No, you taking Luke, you take him over Luca? I don't know. You you know the answer to that. You're no, not I taking really him over. No, look, no, 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 no. My, my, the reason I'm saying I don't know is because like Gee, Luca, like let, we we can we can act like Luca hasn't played with talent. I, no, no, I'm, I'm Luka, not, well, yeah. we can act like Luca hasn't played with talent. He's played with a lot of talent. We get to the point where it's like, okay, brother, it might be you. The reason why this don't work, it might be because you want to fucking dribble all day. So if you can't <laughs> score at sixty, we gonna lose. But but the Hawks, like they do have um Dejounte. They just paid a Congo today. Um, he's a guy that like I liked. I think he's a. I think eventually he'll take over that um starting center spot. I think Capella will be um shipped out. And the biggest thing for me is they have Quinn Snyder, who I mean Quinn Snyder in Utah. I mean you you 
you've seen what he did in Utah. Like, yeah, he had yeah. the Jazz. There was a point in time, I thought Jazz was going to the finals. And I still think that they would have beat the Clippers if fucking uh, George Niang, I think it was game four, wasn't out there, G. I think he was like a negative 15 and played like 15 <laughs> minutes. If that wouldn't have happened, I think they had a chance to actually beat the Clippers and maybe go to the finals. So my sleeper team to um, do a little bit more than I think what people are talking about is probably the Atlanta Hawks. In the West, I got the Timberwolves. I mean, yeah. when you look at the Timberwolves, look at their it's, roster. It's what don't they season, have? No, nah, but like, 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 really, like, what don't they have? You have Jaden McDaniels, who is – and let's keep it, G. I think that they gave the Nuggets the best run for their money, and Jaden McDaniels was hurt. Yeah, like, yeah. let's keep it – they yeah, played they played them better than the Lakers played them. Let's keep it all the way, G. Yeah. So, for me – and then you got Ant, right? Like, Ant, everybody loves Ant. Everybody talks about Ant being this some superstar. I ain't necessarily seen it yet, but if we're going to see it, this is the year to see it. This year for answers to you know go out there. I think it's what year four for him now, if I'm, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's yeah, the year for him to go out there and supplant himself as 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 for sure. I mean, like there's no reason why he can't be in the same conversation as Devin Booker when the year is over, or over Devin Booker when this season is over. You still have Conley, who granted, I mean Conley's a little bit older now, but he can still run a team. Rudy Gobert, he's not what he once used to be, but he's still a very, very good rip protector. And Cat, I know we all have our things about Cat, but Cat's still 25 points, shooting 40% from three. Now, I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to be the guy that's going to lead you to, like, the uh, promised land, but he's still that. You probably had the best backup center in the um, league, Nas Reed. When you look at their roster, like, when you just put their first five on paper, that's one of the best first fives in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. They and Also, this team is going heavily in the um, luxury tax, and this oh, is in 100%. Minnesota. So it's yeah. time to win some games. Like, my sleeper team would be the Minnesota Timberwolves. That, when, when you just look at them on paper, there's no reason they shouldn't win 45 to 50 games. No, I'm I'm rocking with that. I had the Wolves as my sleeper in the West. So I'll start off with the West. They're not really a sleeper, but I'm very interested to see their growth and what would be year two of them playing competitively would, would be the Sacramento Kings. We've seen all the go that they gave to the Warriors last year, and they really they really jagged that series. Um so I want to see how they how they take off this season, knowing that there's a target on their back. They're no longer they're not gonna sneak up on anybody anymore. So I'm really interested in seeing the Kings. And that, that's a team that I think that can actually get to a Western Conference final. The Eastern Conference side is slim pickings, how LeBron said. But <laughs> the Indiana Pacers are going to be my sleeper oh, team. Yeah, I forgot about the Pacers. The Indiana Pacers are my sleeper team, not to probably win some shit, but in year one with Rick Carlisle, 25 games they won last year. 35 games. Tyrese Halliburton is now a superstar and everybody or a star. We can go any way, you know, any way about it. You can pick and choose. But Tyrese Halliburton is that guy. They added Bruce Brown. They added Obi Toppin. So they, they're they going to be a fun team to watch. That's like my league pass team of the year. Every year I like to pick a team on league pass and I'm just going to fuck around and watch their trajectory. Vegas has them at like 36 and a half wins this year. So they're, they're basically where the Orlando Magic were last year. I think this is a team that could win maybe about 40, 41 games as long as they stay healthy. You have Benedict Matherin. You, uh, they picked up Jarris Walker. They got uh, Miles Turner. You got Halliburton. You still got Buddy Hill. You add Obi Toppin. So I think that's a I think that's a sneaky team to watch. And I think you know I think that they're definitely going to make some noise. And they're going to be a tough out. The Bulls can't see the Pacers on the schedule. I think it's going to be easy. The, the Celtics the are not going to see, see nobody on the schedule. schedule. Right. Anybody, right. anybody, <laughs> anybody, <laughs> anybody. But, te but team, but teams are not going to be able to sleep on them because they will try to run you out the gym. Yeah, uh, y'all remember that uh video of, uh, of of Rihanna um like throwing that money at uh, Stephen Hill at the, at the BET Awards like <laughs> when I pay my league pass tomorrow. Um, let's 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 do uh, picks real quick and then we'll get Pavy up out of here and we'll get into the local hour. Uh, so the first two games tomorrow, the first game, uh, the Denver Nuggets will be getting their NBA championship rings in Denver. They'll be open against the Los Angeles Lakers. A uh, lot of a lot of like you know the, the let's say the, the the Nuggets been talking that shit this all season, rightfully so. In the words of future, you do what you want when you pop. You the champion. Talk what you want to talk. Uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James have some problems for that. Not that I had a problem with them having uh, a problem with that, but you know, you niggas got to stay healthy. Uh, and then in the second game, we've got the Golden State Warriors going up against the New Look Phoenix Suns. Man, we're just gonna go around the room uh, real quickly. Pavy, who you got in both games tomorrow? 
Um, I got the Lakers winning uh, the first game just because I think ring night can always be kind of tough, even though Jokic seems to not give a fuck. But I still think no, ring night no. can be can can still be kind of tough on teams. And also, I think that the Lakers will be a little bit extra motivated because of the noise they've been hearing. So I think that they'll win game one. Um, and in the second game, Draymond isn't playing because um, he's out with a sprained ankle. But I still think it's going to take some time for – actually, man. I still think it's going to take some time for Phoenix to get it together. So I'm going to pick the Warriors to win the second game as well. Yeah, I'm going to go Lakers in game one. And um, I'm going to go with the Suns in game two. I think uh, no Draymond will – you know, that will be, 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 uh, be big. I think Kaminga, you know, he's going to get some minutes. I don't know why Steve Kerr is like – don't like playing, bro, but I think, you know, that's a guy who's put in the work and uh, he's, you know, he's trying to, you know, be a contributor to that team. But I think day one, he won't be getting that much, uh, that much burn, even with Draymond out. So I'm going to go Lakers and Suns. Yeah, I'm riding with the Lakers and the Suns, um, even though I think Jamal Murray, he's healthy now, obviously. I think he's going to give the Lakers some fits tomorrow, but LeBron's going to have that extra pep in his step. So I'm going to ride with the Lakers and then I'm going to ride with the Suns because I'm not a Warriors fan at all. Uh, as y'all know, uh, me and uh, Steph Curry, uh, uh, we uh, we 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 were together in, in the light skin uh, team tandem over here. But I'm gonna have to go against my guys, uh, for this. So I'm gonna go with the Suns now because, yes, no Draymond, that's a big thing, but also, as much as as long as even though we know it's gonna take the Suns a decent amount of time to get together in jail, who else is scoring points besides Steph tomorrow? Like, we don't know what the flip Clay might give 41 day, he might give eight. Yeah, we don't. We really don't know what we gonna get from Clay anymore. And I'm definitely not giving nothing to that fucking State Farm agent who I gotta actually root well on this year. It makes me sick to my fucking stomach. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Suns in that game. And the second and the, the first game really depends on how the Nuggets come out. They come out still celebratory mode, got their rings. I think it's gonna be an ass whooping. I'm gonna take the Lakers by like 15. Because LeBron got that fake motivation. You no, know, everybody doubted me. I was number one draft pick 21 years ago. Everything I everything I did, I actually did. Everybody <laughs> doubts me. He gonna use that shit. They gonna win by like 15. He gonna go on Instagram and act like they were like the fucking like nobody thinks they're gonna do shit. So I'm finna log in. I'm about to log in right now. The fan doing take the Nuggets to win. Since you know how it go, you know how it goes when all four when all four take yeah. one team. Like yeah, yeah, so they're gonna be talking about oh they're gonna have us up on Twitter tomorrow with Lakers logos and shit with the X over. It. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm gonna go with the Lakers and the Suns in that one, man. So. Uh, that concludes our NBA coverage. We'll have a lot more, of course, this season. We're going to have a homie Big Waz on on Friday. 